Hi guys, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a mini book haul. Uh, it's just a few books that I've bought over the last sort of week or so. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing I bought was from a charity shop and it was 50 pence and it is The Green Mile by Stephen King. I have had multiple editions of this and for some reason I always end up giving them to my mum who never reads them, loses them and always wants a copy if I have it <laughs> for some strange reason. Um, I haven't read this book yet. I think back in the early sort of 2000s, maybe the mid 2000s, I started reading this when it was serialised uh, in little mini books. I think there was like a few chapters or 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 like a part of the book was, was serialised into smaller books. And I had, I think there was like six or seven, maybe eight of them. And I had them all and I read the first couple and then kind of gave up and then lost those editions. Um, but I look forward to getting to this sometime soon. I love the movie version of this. Um, I think this is probably one of the best uh, Stephen King uh, book to movie adaptations. Um, absolutely great. <clears throat> the Green Mile. Those who walk it do not return because at the end of that walk is the room in which sits Cold Mountain Penitentiary's electric chair. In 1932, the newest resident on death row is John Coffey, a giant of a black man convicted of, of the brutal murder of two little girls. But nothing is, no, but nothing is as it seems with John Coffey, and around him unfolds a bizarre and horrifying story. Evil murderer or wholly innocent, whichever he is, Coffey has strange powers which may yet offer salvation to others, even if they can do nothing to save him. Th that sounds incredible. Um, obviously, with book-to-movie adaptations, there are going to be things that aren't in the movie that are in the book. So I look forward to getting to this to finding out what was in the book and what was left behind and not put into the film. Because the film, I think, is a work of art. I absolutely love the movie. But that's that. The Green Mile by Stephen King. Uh, the next one I got the other day in Tesco's, um, and I'm dead excited about it. It's called Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. Uh, this is not only a gorgeous cover, um, it also sounds incredible. Um, right up my street. <clears throat> Something has been let loose. In Edwardian Suffolk, a manor house stands alone in a lost corner of the fens, a glitter, a, not glittering, <laughs> I shall start again. Something has been let loose. In Edwardian Suffolk, a manor house stands alone in a lost corner of the fens, a glinting wilderness of water whose whispering reeds guard ancient secrets. Maud is a lonely child growing up without a mother, ruled by her repressive father. When he finds a painted medieval devil in a graveyard, Unhallowed forces are awakened. Maud's battle has begun. She must survive a world haunted by witchcraft, the age-old legends of her beloved Fen, and the even more nightmarish demons of her father's past. Spanning five centuries, Wakenhurst is a darkly gothic thriller about murderous obsession and one girl's longing to fly free. That, I just... I... I have no words for how incredible that sounds and also how gorgeous the cover is. It's just beautiful and I can't wait to read it. I can't wait to read it. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> um, so this is quite a short, a short video. This is already the last book in this little haul. Um, it's another Stephen King and I got this one in Tesco's as well uh, as, as the last one. Um, and it, I've been, I've been swithering with this since I saw it, uh, maybe two or three months ago now in in Tesco's, and it's the Institute by Stephen King. Um, firstly, the cover is just lovely. Um, it kind of looks a bit sort of, I don't know. I won't say that it looks like like a monster on the front, but it's like a, 
it's like a young boy paddling a boat um, and his shadow looks like um, looks like death <laughs> um, yeah so I look forward to getting to this one as well the playground was surrounded by a chain link fence at least at, at least 10 feet high and Luke saw cameras peering down at two of the corners they were dusty as if they hadn't been cleaned in a while Beyond the fence, there was nothing but forest, mostly pines. Whatever the institute was, it was in the middle of an old growth, an old growth forest, which meant in the middle of nowhere. And for the playground itself, his first thought was that if, if there was ever a prison exercise yard for kids between the ages of six and 16, it would look exactly like this. The girl, Iris, saw them and waved she double bounced on the trampoline. Shah, who you got there? This is Luke Ellis, Kalisha said. This, sorry, new this morning. Um, and I shall read you the inside, which reads like war and peace. There's a lot. <laughs> Deep in the woods of Maine, there is a dark state facility where kids abducted from across the United States are incarcerated in the Institute. They are, they are incarcerated. I shall start again because I didn't notice the full stop, hence did not take a, a breath and continued reading. <laughs> Deep in the woods of Maine, there is a dark state facility where kids abducted from across the United States are incarcerated. In the Institute, they are subjected to a series of tests and procedures meant to combine their exceptional gifts, telepathy, telekinesis, for concentrated effect. Luke Ellis is the latest recruit. He's just a regular 12 year old, except he's not just smart, he's super smart. And he has another gift which the Institute wants to use. Far away in a small town in South Carolina, former cop Tim Jamison has taken a job working for the local sheriff. He's basically just walking the beat but he's about to take on the biggest case of his career. Back in the Institute's downtrodden playground and corridors where posters advertise just another day in paradise, Luke, his friend Kalisha and the other kids are in no doubt that they are prisoners, not guests. And there is no hope of escape. But great events can turn on small hinges and Luke is about to team up with a new even younger recruit, Avery Dixon, whose ability to read minds is off the scale. While the Institute may want to harness their powers for covert ends, the, co the combined intelligence of Luke and Avery is beyond anything that even those who run the experiments, even the infamous Mrs. Sigsby, suspect. Thrilling, suspenseful, heartbreaking, the Institute is a stunning novel of childhood betrayed and hope regained. That sounds like this, this kind of Stephen King I want to read. <laughs> um, and it's not a big Stephen King book. It's only like 400 and some pages. Uh, okay, okay, it's, um, <laughs> it's 485 pages, but that's a tiny Stephen King book. Um, and... The print's rather large as well. <laughs> so hopefully get to that soon. Hopefully get to the other two soon. Um, I apologise for my rambling on in this video yet again. Another rambly video. Uh, but there you go, that's me. <laughs> um, whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous. Be amazing. Be yourself. And I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.